Yeah. Originally, this project was a much larger project. This is the scheme that I originally designed was coming out at far too much. The final scheme we came up with is what we've got. The works to the barn are looking to cost around £60,000. And that's the big key. So I hope that gives you some idea of what's involved in a project like this. Let's take a look at the work, shall we? Hi, and welcome back to, this will be episode three of this uh, barn conversion restoration project. Last time we looked at the insulation to the ceiling, and this time we're gonna take a look at the tanking, stud work, and uh, some of the plasterboard. But uh, before we take a look at that, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of what the design for the barn is and how it's come to be, uh, and also costings, because originally this project was a much larger project. The uh, barn was one part of a larger scheme for this, uh, this building. I'll show you on the screen now, this is what it was originally intended to look like um, but that the, the cost for that scheme were looking astronomical uh, and we soon abandoned that uh, when, particularly when Covid came along and when Covid did come along obviously you know people couldn't do anything for a very long time uh, and afterwards the fallout was um, much higher construction costs and a lot more uncertainty over those costs as well so what we decided to do uh, when we realised that scheme was simply unattainable. We employed an architect and we had them draw up some technical drawings and go out to a formal tender and provide um, reasonably accurate uh, costings for the project. So this is the scheme that I originally designed when I bought the place about five years ago. Um, I love it, it's a, it's a fantastic design it would have given us everything we want but it's just far too costly um, I think it would have cost in excess of half a million pounds and that's just money we don't have so we asked the architect to come up with a different scheme um, I, this is what I gave them as as sort of inspiration should we say but even that greatly reduced scheme was coming out at a minimum of £210,184 plus VAT. That was the cheapest cost we had back. And again, it was just far, far too much. We'd never get the money back on the house. So back to the drawing board all over again. And the final scheme we came up with is what we've got. So I've done away with the link extension. We've got a opening knocked through from the, uh, from the office where I'm sat at the moment into the barn and then you've seen the layout inside. It's two rooms with an ensuite bathroom. In addition, I've designed an extension on the offset end of the house. And the reason for that is it's in a it's in a far more simple place to build. You know, this is effectively virgin ground. I know what's under here, whereas in this corner, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of services to deal with. And um, over here is just a, a more simple place to build. It's also going to be single story, oak framed and entirely glazed. Uh, again, that's all work I could do myself. And that's the big key. The works to the barn are looking to cost around £60,000. And that's not including paying me for any time, obviously. Uh, and obviously that's that's the really big saving here. There are some others, you know, we decided not to dig out the floor and live with a few steps up into the barn. Um, we've reused as, as much of the materials as we possibly can. And we're only purchasing what we need to do as and when we do each job. So I hope that gives you some idea of what's involved in a project like this, where the designs come from and what we're going to be doing, how it's going to look when it's finished. Still, I hope that was interesting and uh, let's take a look at the work, shall we? Right, um, next thing to do is going to be for me to put stud work all along this wall in front of this tanking, a bit like you can see 
over here, along this wall here. Well, I just want to show you something quickly. That where my hand is, is ground level outside. So everything down here is below ground level, below external ground level. Um, and so as a result, it's prone to getting damp. Uh, and certainly it looks that way, doesn't it? This has actually already been tanked. I've used a cementitious uh, tanking slurry on this wall. There's always concerns about old houses uh, where lime mortar has been used in the original construction that doing something like this is going to stop the wall from breathing and it's going to cause the wall to get even more damp. And certainly if that was the, the only treatment, then that could potentially be true, you know, where the wall is below external ground level here. So there's a couple of things here. Firstly, I'm going to dig down on the outside of this wall and put a French drain in. I'll go into that in more detail when I do that video. Um, but the elephant in the room is this damp. And, and you know, you get a lot of people saying, well, if, it, if it's damp on the inside of your wall after you've tanked, then the tanking hasn't worked. Not necessarily true. And in this case, what I believe happens uh, quite often, certainly in this situation, is uh, cold spot damp. So if you think if this wall, where it's below external ground level, uh, is all quite damp, it's, um, it's probably also going to be quite cold. The wall is much colder here than it is here, uh, noticeably to my hand. And so because we've got uh, uh, liquid screed in here, it's gone down recently, uh, and you know the building's been open to the elements whilst we were getting the roof on, etc. Uh, there's, there's a lot of water in here. Um, and now that we've put the heating on, the underfloor heating, um, all of that water is evaporating and of course what we've got here is a cold surface so all of that damp in the room all of that moisture is just condensing on this wall and that that is cold spot damp uh, so you know if you're in this situation uh, just consider you know how much moisture is in your room have you just turned the heating on for the first time um, is it possible it's just condensation
Right, that is the stud work along this wall more or less done. Uh, it was a bit of a pain, but um, I expected that. wasn't expecting it to be really straightforward, hence this video. Um, so we've got a few studs over there which are scribed into the wall. Anywhere where I've had a gap of more than 600 mil, I've got a, put a stud or um, in this case, just a couple of pieces of timber. But um, yeah, that's it. So the problem we got here is the plasterboard will not fit between the batten and the purlin. It's just on the top edge. If I put the camera up here so you can see. Really, it's just that top edge. So I think I'm going to have to just chisel a bit off of this top edge of the purlin from the wall back to about here. Fun. Down. So it's so uh, your end up. It needs to be hold to it as well, yeah.
if we just get this flipped around. So yesterday we got most of that side of the roof plasterboarded. Got a couple of little cuts at the top to do. That's basically done. And then today we've got that side to do. A bit more going on with the roof lights and the flu. But it's made a little bit easier in that all the bits of plasterboard we put up will be less than a full sheet.
LED strip running through it, but I do have an idea. 